This episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast is brought to you by The Restillery. to another week and it's christmas time yay get okay nobody's excited but me oh Fantastic. no i'm super excited <laughs> i just didn't know where you wanted me to go with it no no it's fine um snuck up on me man i'm sorry yeah. snuck up on the all christmas, of us apparently yeah, for real. yeah. Uh, i was sitting down with curtis and swan tonight and uh doing something a little bit special uh we're, we're doing you know swan you called it pappy holidays but i realized that we're going to be drinking van winkle and not yeah it's close (laughs) enough i mean uh, i was excited you know it's okay well we're doing pappy holidays so uh we're going to be doing a little side-by-side comparison of uh the van winkle 12 year lot b and then weller 12 year as well or sorry um so this will be gonna gonna be uh kind of cool but to get started of course we're gonna do flying blind um where i blind the the co-hosts with a sample. With a blindfold. With a blindfold. <laughs> the blindfold. Yeah. Which yeah, I got the really wrong impression. To... Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be one of those things where you put the blindfold on, spin me around five times, same angle as suburban. But <laughs> yeah. No. We literally, we came into the studio and he goes, so where's the blindfold? <laughs> Swan, we don't actually have blindfolds. <laughs> oh, Good addition, though. Maybe. We'll make it happen eventually. I'll bring my own next time. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that you had invested in such a fancy enough blindfold that, oh, you, yeah. that you needed to come. Different colors as well. You know, one for, one for every shirt. Ah, yes, I got it. Okay. Oh, also, I guess I should probably point out where we are. This is the first official recording of an episode in uh, the new house and in the bourbon room or studio, whatever you prefer what you to call, call it. it. I prefer studio, personally, but... It is very much a bourbon room. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of cool. I like this yeah, it's, a lot. It's different. It's like it. different. You might want to get, like, reinforced locks on here. Yeah, you're not kidding. On this room. It's a good thing not many people Man. know where we live. True. <laughs> Can we get one of those doors? It's like a bookshelf. You pull the book. Yes. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> like a built-in. That'd be really uh, yeah. cool. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm totally Like, make the, the doorway actually the bookshelf, so it just looks like it's a bookshelf. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. So, uh, Flying Blind here. Curtis and Swan do not know what I have poured for them. And uh, what, are you guys, what are you guys picking up on the nose there? It's light. Yeah, it's pretty light. I'm not getting a ton, but... Yeah, not a lot of spice. Not mm-hmm. a ton of nose. Sweet. Where the, where the nose lacks, I, say, I would say that the palate kind of picks it up. Picks it up okay. a little bit. Um, Swan's been taking some time off too from from bourbon, so it's going to be interesting to see how he how he he tastes things tonight. Yeah, I'm the uh, baby bourbon boy part two. <laughs> um, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Four Roses. Interesting, a little bit, but it's a little like punchier than Four Roses. Mm-hmm. I have really been into some Four Roses recently. Oh, yeah. Some of the picks are great. It makes me want to pick up one every time I find Mm -hmm. one that's cast strength. I actually haven't had Four Roses in a long long time. Well, guess what? There's some on the bar. Hey, well, there we go. We can pull some down for you. You mean on the studio, Perry? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) On set. It's a bar, studio, and a bourbon room. And a bourbon room. It's impressive. (laughs) It's the three-fold room. Yeah, I I think overall this is a, a... Pretty good quality. I mean, like, this, this to me kind of would would be a good everyday. Yeah, it's very say. solid. Um, I wish, I mean, I want the nose to be better, but like you were saying, when you get it on the palate, that's when it starts to kind of open up and have more of those bolder, spicy yeah. kind of notes. For sure, for sure. It's missing the hug, which I usually attribute to, like, higher proof. Yeah. But it's definitely not super low. Mm-mm. <clears throat> it's low enough, though. Yeah, I mean it's at it's at the the stopping point for me. 
on like what I prefer for my everyday pours or mm -hmm. whatever. So any guesses on what you guys think this might be? I don't know. I feel like it's four roses or wild turkey, but I'm not a hundred percent <laughs> sure. I always have a tough time with guessing. I know. I know. Well, it's okay. It's just regular old Weller Special Reserve. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I figured since we were doing a couple of, uh, you know, heavy hitted, heavy hitting heavy weeders, hitters, yeah. heavy hitter weeders. Well, this is going to be Never. fun. I was really heavy wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, I figured that would be a good way to kind of warm up the palates and get, yeah. get the ball rolling. Definitely, it's definitely quality, but sure, I definitely wouldn't have pegged it as uh, special, special reserve. reserve. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I like it. Which I also feel like there's a little bit of the hype, you know, mm -hmm. a little of the hype being like, oh well, yeah. Because well, now I that mean, we didn't know, we were flying blind on it. I'm kind of like, huh. I mean, when you when you see this is going in some places for, you know, a hundred dollars a handle. Yeah, I, would, I. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. I mean, it's not. It's just flat out not good enough. No. To pay that much money, unless this is just the best thing you've ever had, and you have all the money in the world to to throw away, you know. By all means, go ahead and do that. But as far as I'm concerned, this is not a one hundred dollar. <laughs> No, not even a bottle no. of bourbon. I see more people lining up to buy this that don't drink bourbon than I would ever expect. Like people will line up like, mm -hmm. oh, my husband likes bourbon. This is special. Yes. I'm going to get this. Or, you know, my wife wants something that's a little sweeter and I want to get something that's awesome and weeded at the same time. And yeah. It's crazy. I'm even line up for it that don't drink bourbon. Well, and it's still, I think, kind of one of those quintessential stepping stones past your your makers and your woodfords too and i mean to to that point about makers you know it is also a weeded bourbon so if you are looking for some of those sweeter notes in a, in a flavor profile special reserve is going to be a good way to kind of expand beyond that now is it the best weeded bourbon no no i would say i i think honestly i would rather drink larceny over special reserve. I could see that. It's been a while since I've touched larceny, but last Well, guess time what? There's some in the bourbon closet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's in There's that like closet. There's like 10 bottles of it. <laughs> yeah. You're in luck. <laughs> There's plenty in that closet, man. <laughs> it's funny seeing bottles that I found, and I'm like, Perry could probably do more with this. And then it's just like, <laughs> it's all in one there. giant closet. And I like, did yeah, more well, with maybe it. Not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just thought that was a nice little way to kind of... Kick off the show. So, is everybody ready to move on then to, yeah, I guess what's going to be the main event, kind of, a little bit? Kind of. I don't know. This is what people are here to listen to, right? Yeah. It's all about those numbers. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway. Speaking of numbers, <laughs> we made it to 20,000. We made it to 20,000 20, downloads. downloads, man. How insane is that? For sure. Yeah, thank you, you all might so not, much. You might have just downloaded and not listened, but <laughs> hey, we like that too. Well, the craziest thing about that too is that we... It, did you just knock a bottle over? Uh, yeah. It's the, all good. The uh, Van Winkle is all over the floor. It's on the floor. The dog's licking it up. <laughs> oh, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. Um, the, the crazy thing about that download count, though, is that we hit 10,000 in August. Yeah. And so we I hit mean, it's December now. Number, yeah. So four months later, we doubled our numbers, which is just unbelievable. To me. Yeah. So thank you guys, everybody who listens to the show, of course, and supports us every week and uh, sticks with us through weeks where there are not episodes, which rarely happens. But Or when Perry sleeps through them. <laughs> yeah, I was okay. waiting on that the other so, morning. So here's the thing. So last week's episode came out later in the day because, yes, I did fall asleep while I was editing it. <laughs> and I, I at first thought what happened was that I had... I, I had stopped it at one point to like check my phone or get a drink of water or whatever and just fell asleep. No, I fell asleep listening to it. <laughs> so the entire... Wow. I, Harry's own voice <laughs> lulled him asleep. <laughs> so, I mean, I was... Ed I, I, my big mistake was editing in bed. You know, I was like all propped up and everything. I was comfortable. 
I mean, it's the same reason like why you never did homework in bed when you were in college, right? What's you homework? Know? Oh, I made that mistake yeah. way yeah. too much. Oh, yeah. I did. I did too. Yeah. But anyway, I I woke up at four thirty. <laughs> wow. And I was like, "What the heck happened?" <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I had to scramble to get last week's episode out and everything. It still made it awesome. out. Yeah, no, it's sure. not like you know I had to skip a week. It actually came out. It was just later than yeah. Intended. I'm done explaining this. Hey, yeah, back on the rails. Let's get this train back. <laughs> so as we kind of uh, get these pours rolling, you guys got to tell me what you've been drinking recently. Uh, I've been having a Wilderness Trail, uh, just the regular. And then I had um, some uh, Wild Turkey, the rare breed. I've got kind of a special bottle of it that I've been trying to get through and drink. Uh, this is my second one, actually. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I it's that. yeah, it's pretty good stuff. It's um, just a little different. But uh, I have been drinking uh, Wilderness Trace. I have the rye Wilder, Wilder Wilderness Trail. Sorry, <laughs> um, Wilderness Trail. Where did I get Trace at? Buffalo oh, Trace they, combi- yeah. combination. Oh no, they they yeah. tried it. Apparently, they've yeah. got a barrel head in their distillery that says that. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I believe that they tried to do that for their name, but Buffalo Trace came for them and That's exactly what happened. switched it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've been having a Wilderness Trail, and I have the rye, but I haven't had it yet. Ah. Yeah. So okay. that'll, that'll be exciting to try. Uh, and then the Jim Beam Bonded that we had. Oh, yeah. Did you wind up going up and picking up a bottle? No, you gave me the leftover. Oh yeah, that's of it, right. I did give so that was the that. that was the leftover from what you gave me, which I oh, then yeah. gave to Curtis. That stuff's I so forgot underrated. About that. Oh, it's, it's so underrated. Yeah, it's, it's very really good. good. Yeah, they got their whole lineup, and it's like nobody's gonna touch that one out of the lineup. <laughs> yeah. And it's my favorite. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's fabulous. I still love Distiller's Cut too. Don't get me wrong, but mm. there really just kind of seems to be something special about that bottle of Bond. Yeah, product. I don't. I don't know. Bottle and bonds in general. We've yeah, talked about. We, yeah, we've harped but. on it for forever. Yeah. So, um, I have a funny story about what I've been drinking, but I uh, before I get to that, I've like I was saying, I've really been enjoying some Four Roses recently. I picked up a uh, barrel pick from Liquor Barn that is fantastic. Um, my moving into the house pour was a pre-fire Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond, um, which was really good. I had it on the stream last week, too, with Chad. Um, But then, so... (laughs) All right, all right, strap in, kids, because this is a a humdinger of a story. Um, My family and Lucy's family, we do Christmas for, like, two weeks, basically, like, there are just so many Christmases that we have to go to. And so last night was our first one. And it was at her grandparents' house. And her aunt, who is a wonderful, wonderful person, didn't have her glasses on when she was at home and was going to pick out a bottle of wine and didn't know what she picked when she was down in her cellar. So we get over to Lucy's grandparents' house and I'm looking on their kitchen counter, and I see this bottle of wine, and I'm like, oh, that label looks really familiar, and I pick it up, and it's a Dom Perignon bottle. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, is this, really, is this really what I think it is? And sure enough, she just grabbed a bottle of Dom Perignon from 1990. <laughs> oh, no. That she and her husband had gotten for a special occasion. <laughs> Not so special occasion. She had already mixed it with cranberry juice too oh, <laughs> before, no. I, before I pointed it out. <laughs> I have a Pappy and Coke next exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I was just dying laughing, and she's like, "Well, it's open. Everybody's going to have some dumb." So we all just had this. It was a very strange moment, but we all just had this toast in the middle of Lucy's grandparents' oh, house of Dom Perignon. Perignon. That's it's like a hundred dollar bottle of wine. And Lucy's dad, Brett, looked up to see how much that would actually cost now, since it was from 1990. Yeah. It's like $400. I'm oh. sure. <laughs> so we had like a $400 bottle of wine for Christmas. <laughs> That's wild. Speaking of wine, I've been drinking a lot more wine lately. Have you? Yeah. 
Interesting. Nothing special. Anything just... in particular, like a Pinot or a Cab? A or... Cab. Yeah. yeah. I really do like Cabernet. I love Cabernets. Yeah. They're just like, I mean, and I, it's because it's attributed to more of those bourbon kind of, you know. you get Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Darker, leathery chocolate. Have you had um, the Mondavi? 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 The Mondavi uh, cab that's aged in bourbon barrels? I haven't had that one, but I've had one that's aged in bourbon barrels called Augment. Okay. Yeah, I think I've heard of it. Augment's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't... I can't... You know, I, I'm not really a super... <laughs> not wine people. Yeah, I'm not This wine. isn't my wine podcast. Yeah, like... <laughs> it's a $12 bottle of wine. Sure, sure. Tastes well, it all right to me. <laughs> we, I think I've talked about this on the show before with... Chad and Sarah, but there is a there's a red blend called Southern Bell. Called Southern Bell, um, that's aged in pappy barrels, hmm. and I mean it is kind of like a gimmicky hype thing, but yeah. I mean it's still good. Mm-hmm. You know, I still I still like it. It's only twenty dollars a bottle. Yeah. So anyway, well, it's been a fancy of mine lately. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but it's been Are we happening. losing you. No, we, is, no, not at all. Are you going to the dark side? No, not at all. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Swan, do you want to pour up the uh, the Van Winkle? I've got the, the Weller 12 yeah, sure. ready to go. And uh, I figure we'll do... Do you want to do left to right? I, I, uh, uh, wait, hold on. Do you do Weller on the left and Van Winkle on the right? Van Winkle on the right. Van Winkle on the right, okay. yes. My right-hand man. <laughs> Now, I, I got to be honest. I have always kind of said that I've liked Weller 12 over Van Winkle 12. And, I mean, I have a little bit left. We've talked about this, Kurt, you and I have. Um, you know, I have a little bit left of the 2016 Van Winkle Lot B left. And just overall, I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I've always been really kind of blown away by um, by Weller 12. So, I don't know. This will be an interesting comparison. Yeah, this one's the 2017, so we'll see if it's ah, any different yeah. than your 2016. Are we directly comparing? Um, We're playing Edward 40 hands yeah. with, <laughs> with the, uh, with the, with the pours here. Well, you here. both kind of had just like double fist in both glasses, and I was like... Well, mm-hmm. the only reason I did it is because the table's are further like, away from, from me than <laughs> yeah. it is you guys. Like, are we, like, <laughs> mixing, <laughs> swishing, and... Uh, it's know. been a while. I just felt like I'd copy Perry, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I have more season now? I'm a veteran now, is that yeah. what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, he's done a few more podcasts than I have. Uh... Hmm. Honestly, right off the bat, there isn't a huge difference on the nose, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> the it, Weller for me is jumping out a little bit more. Not a whole lot. I was thinking the same thing, just a little bit. Like the nose is really close, but the 12's just jumping out of the glass a little bit more. I think the 12 has more oak on it. That's probably what's jumping out. Excuse me. The Weller has more oak on it. They're both 12. <laughs> They're both 12s. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> Probably. I just didn't want to confuse the listeners. Because they can't see us. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I, I I agree with you. I think, though, that where the Weller nose is a little bit more complex, it seems to me that the Van Winkle nose is actually a little bit more mellow and enjoyable. You know, like it's not as much of a thinker, I would yeah, I and say. it's weird too because I've had people tell me pretty frequently that like that have tried this because I take this to Christmas and like I let everybody drink it whether they're a huge bourbon drinker or not. Everyone tells me they usually go for the Pappy or the Van Winkle Twelve just because it's kind of more of a beginner friendly thing. Okay, which is strange because usually yeah. you don't attribute like super hard to find, rare stuff to like, this is something you could give to somebody that's never had bourbon and they're going to yeah, be fine with it. They really like it, yeah. To that point though, Swan, like, I don't know if it's necessarily like, I mean, it's definitely not a beginner. No, it's just I, not offensive. No, I, I think that it, again, falls into that category of a stepping stone or a next step kind of drink. 
I could see that. Because when I first started, you know, getting a little more accustomed to bourbon, I couldn't handle Booker's. I think I told you that. I picked mm-hmm. up 2017-2, and I was like, Perry, I can't handle this. You're gonna, I'm going to have to <laughs> give you this bottle because I just can't do it. And then, No, 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 no. It wasn't that. It was that Elijah Craig barrel proof. Yeah. You finished that Booker's. Yeah, I did. No, you're right. It was a barrel proof, uh, mm-hmm. but it was also 136 proof and super complex and hard for me to handle. Do you think it's weeders that are kind of this like next stepping stone type? I think, it's... I think to a degree, yeah. Because they they have such a distinctly different flavor profile. Mm-hmm. from rye mash bills. And I, it is, of course, presenting new and genuine flavors that you won't have with a, with a rye mash bill. But it, going back to what Swan said, yeah, it's not really offensive yeah, no, to your not. palate. I mean, Both it's, of them are. Yeah. I mean, Both of them are very similar. They really are. And you know what's funny? <laughs> I'm kind of leaning towards the Van Winkle right now. Really? I, I I am. The Van Winkle seems to have a little bit more of a. I, I'm, the way I, I'm reading it is as like a baked goods or like as a cookie. Yeah. Kind of quality I'm to a it. A little more. It's just more nuanced. <laughs> Good word. Thanks. That's a great word actually for it. I think that it's just a little more nuanced than the twelve year. Uh, the Van Winkle just. It smooths it out a little bit. Uh, the mouth feels a little better. I'm I'm leaning towards what you guys said, and it's weird because I was kind of like Perry. I always thought I'd prefer the Weller 12 over the Van Winkle. But for me, like the Weller 12, it hits you with a really, really good note, and there's some kind of change up in it, but not a ton, and then the finish is a little stronger maybe than yeah. the Van Winkle. But with the Van Winkle, it's like it hits you with a flavor and then kind of has a slight switch in the center, you know, to something. Yeah. I'm having trouble picking it up. And the finish isn't quite as bold, but it's still there. No, I I agree with you. The way that I'm understanding this personally right now, and this is having gone back and forth between the few a couple of times, or between the two of them a couple of times, rather, it seems like the Van Winkle is filling in the spots that the, the, the Weller can't seem to. Yeah. And I, and, and I didn't quite realize it until I went from the Van Winkle to the Weller because then when I had the Weller, it felt like I was missing something there. Mm. And I think that's what, when we were talking about, we're probably like on the nose, we were getting more of those, the Oak Mm kind of smell. I think that was kind of covering up what we were wanting yeah. and missing that the Van Winkle gives. I think the Oak is, I think the 12 years very, or the Weller 12 year is really nice, but I think that extra barrel note kind of covers and masks some of the. Yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? That's what I think. I see, I, I see what you're saying what, though, is that it, like it, it, keeps you from from getting that full experience. But at the same time though, I don't think that the Weller has everything that the the Van Winkle does. I can understand why the Van Winkle's the Van Winkle and the Weller is the Weller, knowing Buffalo Trace's their their system for, you know, choosing what barrels are going to be Van Winkle versus mm-hmm. Weller. You know, I th- there's of course I mean, unless we're talking about and what is that barrels. process? Just to so what they'll do is, you know, they'll they'll do one of two things. They'll either take it out and go, "Oh, that's really good, but it needs to age a little bit longer," and then put it back in the rick house, and then that will wind up becoming pappy. Or they'll pull one of these barrels and go, "Oh, that's more like Weller," and think that it's you know fitting the Weller profile, and then that's actually what winds up on the shelves. Oh, okay. Um, so I can see where this would be like, you know, directly comparing the two. I can see where the Weller 12 could have been like a, a point of contention for some people. Um, that being said, this is one of the better Weller 12s I think I've 
I've, yeah, it's I've a had. good one. Yeah, I, like with the Weller 12, I get more oak, like he said, to kind of, it masks up a little bit of stuff, but it's still fantastic. And compared and to the a, Special sorry, Reserve, yeah. it's still, like, you know, it's oh, yeah. fantastic. Fan, absolutely. Maybe that's a, a little bit of a signifier. You were saying that they they go, oh, this fits the pro- profile more of a Weller 12 than a, than a Van Winkle 12, Lot B. Yeah. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's on purpose. I'm sure, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure, too. I get, like, a strong vanilla off the Van Winkle that I yeah. don't see show up in the Weller and as I think, much. I think that's why I'm a, I, I'm reading that as, like, a, a cookie, or like a sugar cookie or something like that, um, because that, that vanilla note is so prominent. Yeah. Here's something we need to think about, too, though, is because we've been talking about how they're so similar the two of them. But Weller 12 is what 30 to 40 dollars. Mm-hmm. Van Winkle 12 is 75. Yeah, and that's provided you find it at retail. Sure. Which could be cont- like a point of contention for either one of these cuz you don't find hardly either, either of these yeah. at retail. My my point though is that with these two bourbons being so similar is the price difference justified for me no i'd pick I up i don't really think it is either no i'd pick up two or three bottles of weller 12 before i went for the lot b again and the difference is how much and how much again uh the weller 12 goes for like 30 to 40 van winkle 12 is like 75 it's to 80 it's literally about double yeah hmm. even though you're getting virtually yeah. the same product from the same distillery same age, same proof. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd buy the Weller Twelve before. Oh, I, I, I think I would too. I mean, but you know that that's just more of a. I, I think we're talking at that point too about like cost effectiveness, as opposed to overall quality. Would I still like to own a bottle, another bottle of Van Winkle Twelve? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But I think that you can't go wrong with Weller Twelve as not necessarily a replacement for it, but maybe more so an alternative yeah. to, to the Van Winkle 12. They're both really good, though. I mean... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if somebody gave me a phone call and told me I want a thing of uh, Van Winkle 12, I'd be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened to me before. Oh, yeah. Funny, I remember. Because yeah. <laughs> it was Swan that probably... <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, man, you want to... <laughs> no, I... I so Perry got drawn uh, at the place that I work, and oh, okay. there was five bottles, and I walked over, and uh, of course, their tiny little wine and spirits um, shop was just flooded with people waiting to hear their name called. And, and I wasn't there. And he wasn't <laughs> there, own, yeah. You were at Maker's Mark, I think, doing mm-hmm. something. We were coming back from the uh, Maker's Candlelight tour, and uh, we were actually in Bardstown. Yeah. We were at the... Um, we were eating dinner. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, doesn't matter. As soon as I um, as soon as I walked in, they called all these names, and I'm like, "Damn it, Barry, you didn't win." And I texted him, and he's like, "Oh, you know, it's no big deal." And then the second I got done with that phone, like that text message, he got a phone call from Myron, who works there, huh. and uh, he's like, "Hey, you got a you got a twelve? When are you gonna be able to pick <laughs> it up?" And Perry just lit up like my phone was just blowing up. Like <laughs> I want it. You lied to me. It's yeah. I'm gonna be there. I was like, what? What do you mean I didn't I'll win? I thought I, I legitimately did think you were pulling my leg for a little bit. No, I'm just generally clueless. <laughs> so uh, it that's that's where it came from. So, but hey, yeah, I'm glad enough. you won, man. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Yeah, it was the first time that I've you know gone for any sort of pappy at all and. One of us won, so I was. That all was for when that. Swan truly became the bourbon finder. Actually, I did that because of you. <laughs> unfortunately, because at one point, what you became the bourbon finder because yes. of me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I remember. because you were like, if you can find any Weller, let me know. So uh-huh. I went to like every single shop when I turned twenty-one looking for Weller, and I was like, <laughs> if I find it, I'm going to get two bottles because I want one, and I'm going to get one for Perry. And lo and behold, and I found one, and another, and another. And other nice. stuff, and they just kept doing it. But you know, and now I'm, he's Instagram famous, uh, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but it's, 
I don't know. It's been fun. I, I mean, now I do. find all sorts of different stuff other than just Weller. You found me like an Elmer T. Lee at one point, too, I think. Yeah, uh, Elmer T. Lee. Um, I've gotten a lot of stuff for Chad as well. Oh, yeah. I lack in the Dusty category, though. You find a lot of those that I can't seem to... I don't know how that happens. I mean, honestly. I, it's just one of those things where it's like, in the right store at the right time. Yeah, and which is ridiculous because sometimes it's like a few years, like multiple years old. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I found this from 1990. Yeah. <laughs> what, I, Perry? <laughs> it's 2018, and you just found something from 1990. And it's like a flip just switched in your head. or A switch. There flip. you go. I yeah, messed up. No, I got all it. Good. Flip, uh, switch. <laughs> flip switched in your head. Because uh, we were looking for, um, what was it? Old Fitz, Baldwin Bond. And uh-huh. and then from like then on it was like once a week. It's like oh check out this pre fire that I found from <laughs> nineteen ninety. Okay, and I'm it like, wasn't uh, like that extreme, but your points made though. Yeah, and it was it was insane. Uh, but I'm I'm all for it. I think we started <laughs> finding those, and then like the age stated knob creeks and stuff, which just put out a new label, which looks awesome. Oh, it's by so the way. pretty. Yeah, but here, no, Kurt, I'll show it to you too while we're hmm? sitting here. Um, yeah, I mean just to go back to the. Weller 12 and the, the Van Winkle. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's nice. It's a lot better than what it what it was. Yeah. I would say. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, it's just so... I mean, it's so similar. It really like, is. I, it, it's just... There is a difference. I'm not going to... Like, like, I'm going to say that the Van Winkle is better. Or it's just different. I can't say it's better. But is it a 100% price increase? No, I don't difference. think it's... Not a 100% so price either. increase. Well, or 12 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I know that was a little bit of a short, like, main segment, but we still have some really good stuff yeah, uh, to, th- th- that's sitting on the table, too. So I'm going to, uh, we, speaking of pre fire, there's actually a pre fire sitting on the table. And it's uh, an age stated fighting cock from the Heaven Hill Distillery pre fire, uh, six years old. We could do it. Do you guys want to try some pre-fire bourbon? I mean, I'm not going to say no. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, pre-fire for sure. It's tough because I have the, you know, still have leftover 12 and leftover (laughs) van until I'm like, I want to shoot this. Just mix them. Just mix them together. You think? No, don't do that. I was about to say. (laughs) I was like, So, for anybody who doesn't know uh, what pre-fire means, in 1996... Uh, Heaven Hill experienced a pretty devastating fire on their distillery premises and um, lost, oh gosh, how many rick houses was it? Like five or six or something? It was, like it was a lot. Um, yeah, if they want more info, I think It's Bourbonite actually did like an infographic on they it. They did, yeah, they did like a whole um, video on it. So that's actually, I'll, I'll link that below in the description. If people kind of go crazy though over pre-fire stuff and uh I, you know i don't know if it's, it's the like nostalgia a, i feel I, it is and it's just like the whole you know novelty of it and everything mm-hmm. but the like, story behind it that you can tell yeah and i mean i don't know Plus if it sounds kind of cool sure and i don't Yo, know if there's pre, like a it's pre-fire man <laughs> it's weird flex but okay um i've heard people do it <laughs> I, are you talking about me uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Actually not. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, they, they go kind of crazy over it just in the fact that, you know, I like, I don't know if there's like a market difference or anything, but, you know, it, it's just a cool thing to, to have and to be able to say that you have had too. And I, I think it's very interesting at the very least. Yeah. No, it's, it's a conversation starter. Ooh, it smells funky. Yeah, I'm I glad gotta, you said because I was thinking the same thing. I got a question about that. Um, <laughs> not super experienced in the dusty area. <laughs> is it funky because that's just how it came out of the barrel, or is it funky because it sat around for that? Long? I think it's funky because it sat around for a little while. I don't know. Okay. I mean, it could have been that it's because of how it came out of the barrel, but honestly, I, I'm not well versed enough in that field. To, to be able to say one way or another. Um, I mean, people like Eddie Russell swear up and down that nothing's been changed. 
Yeah, you know, it's just in the, in the strange. Process. Like it's like you pick up notes of stuff in other, like the stuff we just did. But this is like one solid note of like funk, oak, caramel. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, hitting you exactly. like a brick wall. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's it's strange, but it's at least it doesn't smell like mothballs. I mean, at yeah. the very least. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could it could be much much worse. Yeah. What was the one weird note I had last time? Watermelon. Watermelon. You had yeah. watermelon. Yeah, I was questioning that one a little bit. <laughs> Perry, if you say you smell watermelon on this, it have smells to like go marzipan. It's <laughs> actually an interesting. I want. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was. We give Fred Minnick a lot of crap for saying he smells marzipan and tastes marzipan on certain bourbons, oh, okay. but there's one. I like it though. That's yeah. A, yeah. There's one worse. There's like triacle. Have you heard of that one? No. <laughs> Yeah, it's. What does that mean? I mean like, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't think the people saying it know what it means. <laughs> like, you it, can't just make up words. Yeah, they're making stuff up. <laughs> I guess you know all words are made up, though. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's really about it on the nose. It's just kind of the funk. Yeah, yeah. Funk, I, I marzipan, be... triacle. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, though. I, I, say don't, I getting, don't mind it. Yeah, I, and after I kept pretty much nosing the shit out of this, I started to get a little almond. Mm-hmm. I can see that, yeah, like an almond absolutely. butter. I was going to say, yeah. I think it's more almond butter. And actually, on the palate, it's very almond butter heavy. Okay. I haven't, um, I haven't tasted it yet. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. It's... Look, I think it's really good. Yeah, uh, this is actually really good. Yeah, yeah. It's really strange. It hits the front of the palate, and it's just all sweet and friendly, and then uh-huh. it starts to kind of like blow up a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. But There's, I'm still getting a lot of those uh, nutty notes. Yeah. I don't want to like attest it to peanuts. Uh, no, I think it's more but almond I, it's than It's more it is. almond. Like there's a significant, or like cashew. It's like a significant Oh, difference. okay. Yeah. I I just think this is so so good. I mean, really, I honestly, I feel like I would pick this out of a blind flight between the three things we've already had on the show. See, Five I wanted points. to say that, but I didn't want to be that bold after coming off a section of no it's drinking. Okay. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, and it sucks too because I've had the regular fighting cock that's on the shelf now, and which is oh, and that's okay. It's okay. You can tell that it's kind of made to be the competition for you know. Wild Turkey 101. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. And this just stands completely in its own lane from, you know, oh. Wild Turkey 101. And the finish is so good, too. The finish is when it started it starts to kind of go into, like, some of those floral notes. Mm-hmm. The caramel can, continues over, too. The almond butter kind of plays around a little bit as well. I think it fades away, though, a little bit. It does, yeah. but I Which I'm fine with because you get so much on the front. Sure, yeah. And I think that some of those woodier notes too kind of become apparent towards the towards the end of the palette, into the finish. Um, the hug's real nice too. Mm-hmm. It's just a very gentle like Kentucky hug, but it's like a Kentucky side hug. <laughs> it's great, <laughs> but it's not awkward though. Yeah, it's not an awkward <laughs> side hug. It's, no, you know that acquaintance you know, and you're just like, God, I hate side hugs. Hey, but I, <laughs> you're like a friend I hate of mine him so much. <laughs> <laughs> just the most awkward thing in the entire world. It's like commit to it or just don't do it at all. True, I'm you not as I mean? hateful on it. I've given a, a few <laughs> side hugs in my day. We've all been there. Yeah, we've I, all I mean, been there. I have too, but I think I've given them out of necessity and not out of preference. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is this tickling so bad? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm starting to realize my tolerance has gone way down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got a lot ahead of you, so you better... Uh, we got plenty more. Strap in. Oh, I'm sleeping you in ha- the closet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, there's like six bottles just killed. <laughs> if there had to be a way, Swan, a way to go, it'd be that closet, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't shared too many uh, images of the of the closet with anybody, but Patreon saw it a few days ago. Oh, oh yeah. that's good. Somebody needs to know. Patreon.com oh, yeah. slash my bourbon podcast. I'm a patron now, guys. It's fantastic. <laughs> Extra content's worth it. <laughs> Trust me. And uh, as the time, 
as of the time that this episode comes out, too, uh, there will have been the very first bonus episode over on Patreon as well, where Curtis and I kind of uh, taste some leftovers uh, for our, our best of 2018. Yeah. Um, and then finish out with 2017. Seven, 2017. Yeah. <laughs> Which that was awesome. And is actually also uh, sitting on the table right now. Yeah. In front of us. I saw that. Final thoughts on the uh, Which, on. Jeez, Perry, you have plenty left. <laughs> I know I have plenty left. Compared to what I had, I I had nothing. Yeah, I've never had it. I've only had larceny at his house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty good, but <laughs> pretty great larceny. Yeah, it was really good stuff. The difference in color of the stag's crazy. We also have that sitting on the table, mm-hmm. but it's oh, yeah, that's this year's uh, George D. Stag sitting in front of us as well. Well, uh, final thoughts real quick on the uh, H-State of Pre-Fire fighting cock. Would buy again. I would absolutely buy this again. Yeah. So much yeah. better than what's on the uh, on the shelf right now. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time thinking of something that's on the shelf right now that has a nose that's like this pungent. With the nose, I don't think like... You're obviously not... I think that that nose is a little more like Pre-Fire kind of stuff. Because out of... <laughs> Out of out of like the older you know dust on the sh- you know yeah bourbons we've had, they always have a little bit of this weirdness to yeah, it. Yeah, you, you just like cock your head and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's fair. I just I, I think overall though that the funk doesn't keep me from no this enjoying it. This is the first one that I've been the nose other than the funk. I'm like. See, but something's shining through here. Buy so, it if you can. F- <laughs> buy it if you can find it, <laughs> or move house and then have a really good friend who just gives you a bottle of free uh, pre fire. So I have a question: Do we want to have what's on the table, or do we want to go to the uh, the surprise? That's not the surprise. Yeah, That's what's the, the surprise, surprise <laughs> then, Perry? <laughs> um, I. What do you? I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. I brought Van Winkle, and I was like, this is going to be great. Kurt's not going to know. <laughs> and then he's like, I've got Pre-Fire, Heaven Hill, Fighting Cock. And I'm like, this is fantastic. What surprise are you talking about? I kind of want to see that. Are you ready for the surprise? But then? I don't. I Also, here's a question. Here's a counter question, Perry. Do we want to see the surprise first before we try this? This is a very classic door A or door B question. I don't know which one to go with. Let me, let me say this. The surprise could go into and could play well with what's on the table right now. So we should do it before. We could do it with. Show me the surprise. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Perry's over here just like. Nur, nur. It's the 2018 no WLW. <laughs> Holy shit. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's, How? This, it's this year's How did uh, you William, do this? Lurie, William Lurie Weller. Yeah. Perry, you are spoiling. <laughs> it had the paper on it, too. <laughs> I think we just lost Swan. Are you crying? <laughs> you didn't have to tell him, Kurt. Oh, man. <laughs> no, this is... How? <laughs> I've never... Yeah. Wow. That's all I... What we have on this table right now is just... You will never find that. I just want to point out that I am choosing to open this instead of resell it for $400. <laughs> yeah, I had to make that decision with Chad, too. It's a hard one to make. It's, uh, it's a little rough. Once you know what the secondary price is, you kind of have it's to go, tough. what's yeah. better, me enjoying it or me having more money? And personally, I would rather enjoy it. So uh, we could do all three of them side by side. Oh, okay. Like the stag, too? Oh, yeah. So I don't think we're actually going to do like a review of this no. necessarily, which I mean, we reviewed last year's. It's fine. You know, we don't have to do all of this again, but I did feel the need to document this for Patreon. So hello, Patreon. Of course, over there. <laughs> you both are like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're about to, uh, uh, do a fresh crack on uh, the William La- William Larue Weller, twenty eighteen, BTAC. What and, a beaut! Uh, what I'm a so beaut. excited. Um, I look at the old one and I'm like, what a beaut! 
But I look at this one and I say, what a beaut. So we're going to do a, a three-way side-by-side uh, between this, last year's Weller, and this year's George T. Stag as well. So, Swan, if you need to stay on the couch tonight, it's okay, buddy. Uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. You ready? Perfect. Perfect indeed. Oh, man. Real cork. Oh. After, so, <laughs> is this your first time comparing the last year's to this year, like directly? Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, I'm I interested. think it would have to be, right? Yeah. We just opened it. <laughs> we just opened it. Well, I mean, Chad has this year's. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, I've had that with him you and Sarah. Already? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. No, uh, I wouldn't. Nah. This guy. This guy. Yeah. I'm just joking. Anyway, I. I, I've had this year, and I actually, you know, of course, had this year's stag as well. Mm-hmm. Um, had them side by side, but I've not had last year's WLW with this with year's. This year. So I'm interested because, like, a lot of people have said that they <laughs> prefer. Kind of like, <laughs> I'm just excited, man. Like, <laughs> a lot of people said they prefer last year's over this year's. I've said that too. Yeah, but I. I've not seen anybody do them side by side. It's just somebody saying they prefer it. So. Yeah. Well, let's stop talking <laughs> let's about it. Let's get to it. Okay. Um, so Swan said that he wanted to pour for himself. So I'm going to let everybody kind of pour oh, for okay. themselves. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just take um, this one. You guys can have okay. the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon just saw some good stuff. Patreon's getting uh, Oh, I mean, no, they're getting a present. But they also just saw me try to pour... Uh, something into what a glass with the cork in. <laughs> it's like it's like Christmas came early. Well, I guess Christmas kind of came. It's a good this is the day Christmas after Christmas that around. this is coming out. So. I mean, you just yeah, you just can't go wrong with that nose. Yeah, I love so a the, candle made out of this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> give me one hundred candles. Yeah, so. For anybody who is maybe new to the show, um, this was our second review ever uh, on on the podcast, and which was a ridiculous thing that we we did did. Um, but you know, but it's what happens, I guess. So anyway, you know, I haven't really played up a whole lot of the uh, holiday portion of this very much. Um, yeah, we are New Year's. I'm feeling it, man. It's great. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what you just said. There's but something. Anyway. There is. This is the best nose I've ever had. Oh no! It absolutely is. just. It's so floral. It's so classic. It's so just everything that you want there to be yeah. in a bourbon. Mm-hmm. And I'm such a fan. Yeah, I'm such a fan of this. And I don't even want to like. Go on. <laughs> I just want to. I, I want to go on with life. Don't get me wrong. I just, I just don't want to go on with like overhyping it, over talking about it. No, just be, I don't want to drink it because I'm like I want to oh, come okay. back to it because I know that this is going to be my favorite. <laughs> Stay tuned. The answer might surprise you. Anyway, I'm gonna say, okay. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa. Cheers. And Hanukkah, too. Swan killed his. Yep. I didn't pour that much. Fair enough. But this is awesome. Holy moly, it's so good. Oh. (laughs) I don't know how, but this has like a Kentucky hug that takes its time. Like it sits in your mouth, yeah. and then it's like, oh, by the way, I'm just gonna, <laughs> yeah, and then I'm just gonna gradually get. It's down a there. bourbon that treats you right. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, that's just great. I think that I still stand by this being my favorite bourbon from last year. I mean, one year on, you still, know, yeah, and I still my favorite from last year. I, I mean, I can't say from this year. You know, are you saying from like 2018? No, I'm saying 2017. 2017. Like this is. This it's my Weller favorite is from still... 2017 and 2018 so mm-hmm. far. But I haven't had these two either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perry's giving some... Uh... 
I don't want to say too much. Some foretelling. I don't want to say too much. Foreshadowing. All okay. right. I'm going to save. Just a I saved a little bit as well. Yeah. Just because I'm curious. I was all in. But Whoops. <laughs> you were way all in. Yeah. The nose isn't jumping out at me as much. It's still pleasant. Oh, it's oh. still there. Still pretty good. I yeah. mean, you're like comparing perfection to... Perfection. Like a, yeah. It's, it's pretty close. Don't get me wrong. The 17 does have just a little bit more... Yeah, I, I think still, it's a little bit more spice. I still think that the 18 has a little bit too much floral. Yes, to I it. was just going to say that. Like it, it's almost a little bit too perfumey. Mm-hmm. I would say it's still. I mean, again, it's very good. Don't get me wrong, but I just kind of think that overall, it's not as. It's just not as enjoyable as. It's not as uh, rounded. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, it's very rounded, I, but comparatively to the 2017, the nose itself is not as rounded as the other. I'll be curious to see what it's like three or four months after you've opened mm-hmm. it, because both of the ones that you've tried at this point have been fresh cracks. Yeah, so. and unfortunately, I mean, there's no real way for me to you know do a direct comparison between last year's and this year's in terms of like, you know, how long it's been open in the bottle. Yeah. But I just don't think that this year's is as good as last year's. I don't think so either. And I think you hit it right on the head a little bit that it's a little too perfumey. Mm-hmm. That r- right on the tip of the, like on the front, you get, yeah. you're like, am I having perfume? <laughs> It's still really good. No, it absolutely is. I don't think... So this has done so well for so many people in their best of 2018 list. I just don't think that it's good enough to be up there in that in that realm. In the yeah. 2017? In 2018. Yeah, to be... No, I'm saying like I don't think oh, that it's good enough to yeah okay. out of out of this year's releases. I don't think that it's quite good enough to be in the top five, yeah, top three or whatever. Mm-hmm. Could it be top ten? Maybe. I don't know. I still have to kind of go back and you know figure all of that out. But that being said, I'm not upset but with, with this. Not at all by any means. Yeah. I've already actually done my best of 2018 just to the bottles that I personally kept. And uh, I'm going to make a post before this episode comes out, so I'll just go ahead and tell you how it went. But my, yeah. I had C918 first, mm-hmm. and then I had Booker's 30th second. I still think this would come in third out of those, which really? says a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really good. Now, if 2017's release was this year's, it would probably be fighting C918 for first, oh, yeah. if not definitely taking it. Yeah. Um, it's still great. I still have a chance to ruin it with the stag here in a minute. We'll find <laughs> I was out. Gonna say, but, you, uh, haven't, you haven't tried it yet. But it is <laughs> it is good. The perfumey bit is strong. I think maybe uh, if anything happens to this bottle where keeping it open kind of dulls down that perfumey note to it, it's going to be right great. Up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've already gone on and uh, nosed the George T. Stag here. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> Where you're kind of questioning on the the 18 WLW. Yes. There is no question with this one. No. None. Not at all. I mean, it is so in your face good. <laughs> like you just like yes. <laughs> it's like George T. Stagg walked into a room and said, "I'm here. I know I'm great." Like, don't come. That's don't it. come talk to me. That's it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> I know I'm great. You don't need to say, oh, I'm your biggest fan. I he know. He doesn't need any explanation. He knows. Yeah, he came in here, took every single mic off the mic stand, dropped it, and left. Like, yeah. It's just, <laughs> exactly. It's that good. He ruined all of my equipment. <laughs> Daggum. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. It's so brown sugary and caramely and... I yes. mean, it, it like there's a dark chocolate note in there too that kind of peeks through a little bit, but I mean, I just, I'm so 
enamored with this year's stag. This nose is very good. Yeah. I, well, let's taste it before I go any further. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> I was expecting it to be so much more punchy than it is. No, it's and so it's, pleasant. It's right on the edge of that, though. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That's just done right, man. I just. I... Oh, that's good. I think it is leaps and bounds better than this year's Weller. Yes. Honestly, I do. I agree with that. Um, it, it's funny because... It's a step above the, I, I would say, the 17 Weller. I kind of would have to agree with you there. Not, I'm not saying like a, you know, it's a very small step. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. But what the Weller doesn't have is more of the barrel influence and more of those darker notes of coffee, of like mm-hmm. roasted chestnut? I think so. I think that's exactly what that is. And and chocolate. Yeah. This is like the best pecan pie you've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Made into... Like the candied... Yeah. It's it's funny how we're spending more time talking about this one as opposed to the other two because I, I think that this is the one that grabs your attention the most. This one also makes me think the most. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, like, I'm much more of a fan of... The profile from the 17 than I am this generally. Yeah. But I think I would still take this over that. Again, kind of like a marginal difference. But yeah. this is just, it's great. It, it's yeah. funny though because like this year's stag is better than last year's stag. But last year's weller is better than this year's weller. Like it's weird how yeah. it kind of it kind of flip flop mm-hmm. between the two. I just, I, this is such a strong contender for me for best bourbon of the year. I mean, it it is. <laughs> I know, like it it's out of what I've had. Yeah, I mean, it's so up there with everything. I and and honestly, it kind of seems to blow most of it away. And sure, I know it's allocated, and you know, most people aren't going to be able to get it and everything, but. You know, honestly, if we're talking about what some of my best pours from 2018 have been, this is the one that I keep going back to. It's the one that I think, I, aside from maybe, you know, the Elijah Craig C918, <clears throat> this is the one that just I can't get out of my head mm-hmm. in terms of like, oh, I think I know what's. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I definitely feel like this is up there. For me, I've also only had one sip of it, so I'm excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, it's great. I would really like to have this with a cigar. I think it would go very oh, well with a cigar. So well with yeah, a cigar with a cigar and maybe like a steak. Yes, <laughs> it's one of those bourbons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you've ever watched Parks and Rec, it's like the scene where they uh, instead of Ron Swanson's birthday, they. You know, they freak him out because he's going to have all these people screaming happy birthday. Yep. the balloons and cake, and then they stick him in a room with a steak. Yep. And then he just and has whiskey this whiskey. This yep. is that whiskey. I would yeah. want for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, and, and it, it sounds like such a cliche. Except he'd want log of and log of and yeah. But. Yeah, I can't do the peat. I'd take this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take this. I totally agree. I don't even know what I was going to say. It's really good. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. I too. just, I. I'm going to save that for last. I was going to say, I think I'm I have, have like, to do the same. I have like one sip left of everything. <laughs> and I'm yeah, going to switch bit. the 17 <laughs> with Swan, the 18. Swan's got the tiniest little bit of the 17 left, but you know what you can do, Swan? Oh, no. You can have a little bit more. I'll, I'll be back for that. <laughs> I'll show up one night asking for my free refill. <laughs> Sir, can I have a refill? Hey, honey, Swan's here. What's he doing here? Please, sir, can I have a refill? (laughs) Can I have another? (laughs) Can I have a refill, please? Oh, man. Anyway, um, well, I think that about that about does it for our uh, our little surprise section here. (laughs) A huge (laughs) surprise indeed, man. Um, 
If you want to go check out the, the video version of this, too, you can head to patreon.com slash podcast. And for as little as a dollar a month, you get to see our uh, bright, shining faces. <laughs> and um, and really the fairly beige wall behind us, <laughs> too, right yeah. now. There will be art up there soon, I promise. Yeah. But and essentially, this entire video is our jaws just like, no. <laughs> it just hitting the floor. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thanks for watching, Patreon. Later. So that moves us into uh, one of our final segments on the show, Tips and Bits, where we recommend things. So, guys, what kind of tips and bits do you have this week? Uh, see, you know, I just listened to the podcast where you guys said that everyone forgets the tips and bits. And, and guess who's there forgot. now? Uh, be Swan. Oh, no, I got a good one. I'll start. Um, been watching Superstore. You ever seen that? I have seen it. Yeah. I've not really. I liked it, but I didn't like it enough to continue with it. Do you like it a lot because it's basically your workplace? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. They, like it's funny because like the story is just you know it's, it's kind of okay. It's not fantastic, but then every once in a while they do these like harsh cuts to where there's like a customer just doing something so outlandishly stupid. Whoever wrote that show is like, what if a customer did this? And I'm looking at it like, that happened last week. Like, it's just... It, <laughs> that's not that crazy. Yeah, that's that happens. Uh, so it's just funny for me. But I, I think unless you've worked like a retail environment for a good while, it, you might some of the humor might go over your head. But sure. it's, it's still, it's pretty good. Gotcha. All right. Mine is... I'm acting like it's this huge <laughs> thing. It's really not. It really isn't, guys. Um, Drum roll, please. No, have you played Drake's Uncharted? Uh, no, this is I like not. a throwback Thursday kind of deal. Yeah, it's funny that it is Thursday. Hey, so it that is that works Thursday. perfectly. Spoilers. <laughs> um, but Drake's Uncharted, man. I just recently had uh, started playing that again, the remastered version on PS4. Yeah, big fan. Really. Yeah, it's a lot of okay. fun. It's just like an adventure, Indiana Jones kind of, you know, you just go and and the controls aren't that hard. It's just, you just enjoy That's it, nice. you know? I like a video game where I can basically <laughs> yeah. do anything without having to like go through a yeah. thousand tutorials. Essentially, it's like a, a movie that you just kind of assist with. <laughs> yeah. But it's really good. Anyway, Drake's Uncharted. You guys should go uh, play that again. Play all, the whole collection. Okay. Fair enough. That's such an odd, you know, tips and bits for me. But well, that's okay. Now they're doing a lot of those remastered it's a good throw. things. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's yeah. been remastered for. Yeah, they just did Spyro forever. They yeah. did Spyro is like one of those games I never thought I'd see again, and as soon as I did, I'm like, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I mean, uh, and they're doing, they're doing uh, Crash Bandicoot too. They are, yeah. yeah. So. Well, like a couple of years ago too, I got a, a Nintendo 2DS, and the very first thing I played on it was Ocarina of Time. And then, yep. you know, played uh, Majora's Mask afterwards, too. And, I mean, I love Legend of Zelda, but, you know, like, they were the remastered versions and everything. And you, like, have you played the, the Switch coolest. version? No, I've not yet. Nintendo Switch Zelda? No. I know, I, I know everybody says it's amazing. I'm, like, a year behind on the Switch because everybody For the record, it. I'm a year behind on the Switch, too. <laughs> I just know somebody I mean, that's, that's played it. that's mainly because I don't have it. Yeah, you I know? don't have it either. My, I just know somebody that has it and has brought it over to my house, and I'm like... <laughs> yeah, this is really good. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things. One, so if you're... At, this is so weird, and I didn't know that it even existed uh, until about a week ago, but Jeff Goldblum was on uh, The Late Late Show with James Corden, and he was playing with a jazz band. And he has a jazz album out that is really, really good. <laughs> All right. And I, I love Jeff Goldblum. I think he's just one of the weirdest and funniest people to ever exist. He is very odd. Um, and he, uh, check out his album. Um, it's called The Capitol Studio Sessions. Yeah, that's what it is. And then the other thing, I saw Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse the other day. Holy crap. That movie is so good. Maybe the best Spider-Man movie ever. Like, period. I've been told it is. It's I haven't seen it. But. So good. Strictly for the, uh, I mean, just being from a creative background, 
Yeah. That. Oh yeah. Looks amazing. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. better than Andrew Garfield? <laughs> 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 Most things are. It's fine. I don't need you oh, mean it's better than Tobey Maguire? Yeah, that third movie was great. Did you see that singing <laughs> sequence? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Uh, anyway, um, you Spider- mean it's better than? <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's better than the 1970s Spider-Man? Doesn't oh, matter. Man. Um, yeah, Spider Verse is really, really good. Go check it out. So uh, that about wraps it up for us this week on this Muburban podcast. Uh, Curtis and Swan, thank you guys so much for. Hanging out with me, per usual. Thank you, Perry. Um, yeah, I mean, seriously, please, man. look at the table, <laughs> Patreon. Look at the, look at the table. Well, the videos. Yeah, the videos done now. Yeah. Well, they saw it. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, where can people find you on social media if they would uh, like to do that? Uh, I suck at keeping up with my personal stuff, but oh, I uh, thought you were gonna say like I suck at gmail <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. No, but I'm going to have to register that after this episode. <laughs> Probably take No, them. just uh, at the Bourbon Finder on Instagram. I've not uh, jumped over to any other platforms yet, even though I've had a couple people ask. Um, that's about it for me. Yeah, mine is uh, Kurt Khan on Instagram and at Kurt underscore Khan 15 at Twitter. Yeah, uh, if you want to follow me, I am at PRitter1492 on social media all across the board. And then if you would also like to follow the show, we are at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. What? Also, thanks for the shout out, Swan. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, that yeah. Was great. Yeah. 1792, man. Yeah, I kind of forget that it's on my shelf. And then as soon as I find Boom. it, I'm like, this is great. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then you can also uh, check out all of our merch at bourbonshop.threadless.com. Through the end of the year, of course, we have a big sale going on for the one-year anniversary of the podcast and all that good stuff. Uh, If you would also like to become a patron of the show, which please do because that helps us out so much, you can head to patreon.com slash mybourbonpodcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can, well, you can keep the lights on in the uh, new bourbon studio. Yeah, keep the lights on, keep the walls beige. (laughs) It's accessible beige, okay? (laughs) Accessible. That's the name of the paint. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else do we do here? Uh, five-star rate and review on iTunes, please. Uh, that really helps us get to uh, more listeners and get the name out there a little bit more. Thank you all, of course, so much for listening. Uh, we have, well, actually, this is the last episode of, uh, of 2018. 2018. So uh, we got... What we got an episode coming out pretty much on uh, on New Year's Day, so be on the lookout for that. I guess we'll see you guys in the new year, man. New Year, happy holidays, yeah, man. all that good stuff. Hope you enjoyed your Christmas. I know this is coming out the day after, after Christmas and all that. Um, enjoy your Kwanzaa, your Hanukkah, your any holiday, uh, whatever you holiday enjoy. it is that you celebrate. Happy holidays to the listeners of this and my bourbon podcast. Thank you all so much. We'll see you in the new year. But until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. I'm Swan. And this is my bourbon podcast. Mm-hmm.